Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Minecraft and Maya. My name is Kasanis. A few of you have been asking me about uh, props. Now not the props like we built before, not the flat props like the swords or the axes, but about block props. So props that you might want to animate, move around. In the last episode we took a look at creating an environment and the environment we created is very basically static. It's, it's a, a complete mesh. You can't animate anything within there. Any of the props that you want to move, like a piston or a chest or an ender chest, anything like that that you want to physically have animation to, you're going to have to build separately. So today we're going to take a look at one of those items. We'll take a look today at the chest. It's fairly straightforward and uh, you guys have done most of this stuff before, so a lot of this might actually just be a review. But that's fine for anyone who's new. It's going to be very simplistic and if you follow these steps you'll have yourself a chest at the end. Okay, let's start off. First thing we're going to do is create a a polygon object, a polygon primitive, a cube. Go across to this little square and make sure you click it. And that's going to bring up a separate window. I'm going to create a cube of a very specific dimensions and I'm creating these dimensions based on the texture of the chest that is located within my Minecraft bin folder. Uh, and I've, I've counted out how many pixels is it across and I'm basing my measurements for all of my items on the pixel size, the number of pixels across width and height and depth of the object. I know that the base of the chest is 14 wide, 10 high, and 14 deep. And I'm going to create that right now. Bam. It's going to end up with this. Afterwards, we're going to create the interior of the box because whenever we open the lid of a box, you're going to be able to see inside of this object now. So we're going to have to actually add an interior. Very, very simple to do. I want you to with the cube selected, go over to this area over here and select poly cube and it's going to bring up this separate part of the window in the channel editor, sorry in the channel box. I want you to change the subdivision width to 3 and the subdivision depth to 3, not 32, to 3. Now you can see that it's added in some additional geometry, exactly what I wanted. The next thing we're going to do is go into panels and the orthographic and the top view so we can see down on this object. Now hold down your right mouse button until this new window pops up and select uh, edges. Bam, just like that the whole thing will turn blue and allow you to select these edges now. Double click on this one here and it's going to select all the edges all the way around. While holding shift double click on this one and it's going to select all the edges all the way around. I'm now going to expand this out making the interior of the box which is going to be this area right here a little larger and I'm using the scale tool right here. I'm going to scale it outwards like this and I'm going to leave it as two grid units wide. That's about the same as it is in the actual texture. The texture is two pixels wide so I'm trying to match that as best I can. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Double click, shift, double click, and expand. And when I expand it out to two pixels wide, we end up with a larger interior here. And this is exactly what we want to see. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go back into my perspective view so I can see the entire box and I'm going to hold down the right, right mouse button like this and I'm going to say face bam and I'm going to select the interior face right here just like that. Now we're going to use a new tool make sure you're in polygons up here and go to edit mesh and in edit mesh you're going to see extrude make sure it says keep faces together that this is clicked on and I want you to say extrude that's going to change your manipulator to look like that this is going to allow me to create new polygons just by stretching this downwards. And I'm going to stretch it down, sticking at the bottom of the box there, so I'm just going to raise it up a bit. And you can make this as deep or as, you know, as shallow as you'd like. So that's going to give me the bottom of my box. One last thing I'm going to do, right click, holding it, say object mode, and select this entire box. And I'm going to bevel this. Now some of you have asked me, do you have to bevel? No, you do not. But let me tell you straight up, professionals bevel. <laughs> That's it. There's no such thing as a sharp edge in Maya. There's no such thing as a sharp edge in the real world. If you left this like this, you know, people think, okay, this is so sharp it's going to cut you. That's how sharp these edges are. You do not want that. Especially if you're using a different texture than I use. I'm using Lambert textures on everything. But if you use something like a Fong or one of the other textures that actually have a specular reflection, the specular reflection is going to reflect differently if the edges are beveled. You really want to do it. You do not have to. It is purely aesthetic. You do not have to do this. Okay, so I'm going to right click, I'm going to sorry, select this, I'm going to say edit mesh, and I'm going to say bevel right down here, boom. And that's going to give me some additional mesh. Perfect. I'm going to do the exact, oh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I rename this. I'm going to call this thing here, um, chest bottom. Bam. Just like that. Now, what you're going to do next is you're going to do the top. It's done exactly the same way. So I'm going to create 
polygon primitive, cube, bam. I've counted it out, and I know that it is 14, 14, and 5, just like that. And I'm going to create this, just like that. Let me drag it up. Same thing we did last time. Change these things here to 3 and 3, bam. And we're going to stretch these. Going to my top view, panels, orthographic, top, hold down, edge, click, sorry, double click, double click, shift, double click, expand out, zoom. same thing, double click, shift, double click, expand out, zoom. perfect. This time we're going to go into our perspective like this, and we're going to go to the bottom of the box, hold down your, your right mouse button, say face, click this guy here in the middle, and you're going to say edit mesh, and you're going to extrude, just like we did before. Boop, pushing it up. Is it deep enough? That's yeah, probably fine, just like that. After that, hold down your right mouse button, say object mode, click it one more time, and say edit mesh bevel. Bam, just like that. Double click, sorry, just click and rename. We're going to call this one here chest top. Just like that. Now, there's one last piece of this chest that we have to worry about. That last piece is going to be the latch, and we're going to actually create separate geometry for it. You wouldn't have to. If you wanted to, you could actually extend it out of here and blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to. I'm just going to add separate geometry. Really, really easy to do. It is a total of, let me see, create, same exact way, uh, cube, bam, click it on here. And we're going to make this thing here a total width of 1, because it's, uh, no, a total width of 2. That's a lie, because it's too wide. It is a total height of 4, and it is a total depth of 1. And when I create it, create, it's going to make a little tiny box, just like this. And again, right away, edit mesh, bevel, bam, and rename this to, Q, to chest latch, just like that. Now. What I am going to do, I'm going to go into my panels, my orthographic, and my front view, and I'm just going to align this guy here. This is my chest top. I'm not going to align it to the very top. I'm just going to put it right there for now. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to align this latch. This latch, in turn, is going to line up so it's hanging down by two. Just like that. And you know what? This is just an approximation. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Just like that. Okay, and now I'm going to go back into my this mode. And I'm going to make sure I go into Panels, Orthographic, Side View so I can see it. And I'm going to make sure that this is lined up like that. So now it's aligned in both the front and the back. It's in the appropriate location. It's all been renamed. The last thing we're going to do in the modeling portion of this video is to actually rename, or sorry, to actually create a very fast hierarchy. So we're going to go into our uh, window, and we're going to open the outliner, which will pop up this new window. And we're going to take chest latch, and we're going to drag it, and we're going to with our middle mouse button, and we're going to drop it into chest top, just like that. Now, whenever I move around chest top, the latch moves with it. Okay. And let me just show you what this is going to look like so you guys can see the finished piece. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a very simple control system and texturing the box as well. After that, you're going to have a box that you, or chest that you can actually throw in. A double chest will be exactly the same thing. You're going to do it exactly the same way. You're not going to make two separate chests and put them side by side, however. You're going to make one larger box. Make sure you go in and you count out the number of pixels in the texture in your Minecraft bin folder. Check, uh, or whatever texture you're going to use, count up the number of pixels you're going to be, make it that wide, make it that deep, everything else, and then you're just going to put this latch in the middle. So a double chest is done exactly the same way. <sighs> so, is a, uh, so is an ender chest, now that I think about it. You do the same thing for an ender chest. I don't know if it has a latch. It might not, but ender chest done identically. Okay, everybody, so that's going to take us to the end of the modeling portion of this video. We've renamed everything. The last thing we, we should probably do is probably... Uh, um, just right click and say, or sorry, go up here to edit and say delete all by type and say history and it's going to get rid of all the extra garbage that we had in there. Everything is cleaned out now. Perfect. So that takes us to the end of the modeling portion of this video. In the next video we're going to take a look at the control system and the textures. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up and if you haven't done so, take two minutes and subscribe. Have a great day everyone.